Good morning. We're very fortunate to have with us John Broster, who is the winner of the Engine Grade 12 Physical Science, and that's quite a mouthful, Engine Grade 12 Physical Science Award for My Best Lesson. John, welcome. Thanks, Peter. Now, the lesson that you described is about energy. But in fact, energy is, is quite a complex or quite a difficult concept. And, and your lesson, uh, as I remember it, is, is a, a summary lesson that you would normally give just before learners go off and write their matric exam to try and round off, get a, a rounded picture of energy in interactions. Peter, that's giving it its highest objective. Oh. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Another objective is that an energy reaction where heat is liberated or, or energy is liberated, they're always exciting and they're explosions mm -hmm. and a little bit unpredictable. Lots of flames and bangs, and so that's another good way to end your yeah. your years. But of we high don't want science. people to think that that's what chemistry education is all about. It's a it's a, it's the cherry on the cake, but it's not the cake. Well, that's true as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's start with the physical reactions. Sure. Peter, I guess most of the viewers have seen in a sports match when the first aiders go on, and they take this magic spray and uh, spray it onto somebody's skin where they're suffering. It says shake well, and it says that the, the, the content here is butane. And uh, let's have a go here. Okay. And, uh, nice and cold. This is a physical reaction in which the energy is drawn in from the environment, and in particular from the skin or the part of your body that is uh, sore. Why is energy being drawn out of my hand? The heat or energy is being drawn out of your hand into the liquid as it evaporates because the, the molecules of butane in the cannon when they come out of the cannon in the liquid phase and they're close together okay. and they require the energy from the environment or drawing it from your hand to move further apart and that's a physical reaction there's no chemistry involved there right the bonds are breaking and uh, the bonds between the molecules intermolecular bonds intermolecular yeah. bonds. as opposed to in interatomic okay so it's the okay. intermolecular bonds are being broken these big molecules are mo moving further apart and they're gaining potential energy to move further apart. Right. What about chemical processes where you made the distinction between intermolecular and now interatomic within the molecules? Let's, let's talk about some of those. They're all going to be exothermic because those are the exciting ones. Sure. So what's the first one? We're going to make a reaction in a balloon. We're mixing hydrogen and, and oxygen. So we're taking again two energy rich um, chemicals in the form of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay. We're going to take two parts of hydrogen to one part of oxygen. Um, the only product is, is, is water, water vapor. So, right, uh, now we're going to react hydrogen and oxygen. This is a very exothermic reaction as well. It's a, a fuel of, of rockets and spaceships. We fill the balloon with two thirds oxygen and one third hydrogen. And uh, when the balloon bursts, I hope you'll see that the energy release is a little bit more than what is typically released when you burst a balloon that's filled with air. Now I'm going to get to the, as a safety tip, I'm going to get to the far end of this rod, which could be a ruler or a meter stick, and I'm going to move the balloon into the Bunsen flame, and this again is the energy that we need to kickstart the reaction. And you keep your eyes on the balloon, not me, it'll be a good idea. Yes. <laughs> well, I think that worked. And so the congratulations that were on the balloon were indeed due. Well, Mr. Broster, you have certainly done science a great deal of service. I thought you were going to get blasted against the back notice board there. Wow. It's not a dramatic explosion. You don't, you don't have to stand away from it. No. And you don't feel very strong shock waves. Sure. And it does have a kind of a hollow sound to it. It has a very typical sound to it when you, when you, when you listen to yes. it. Yes, and we must just say, look, as 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 uh, as much as you've said that it's not that dangerous, you don't do these things unless you have taken a great deal of precaution. Nobody should be standing close by to that when it happens. And you saw I had the balloon on the end of a oh, one oh, meter rod. Rod, yeah, and, sure. Uh, I stepped away before I held it into the Bunsen flame. Okay. Now, your last demonstration was, uh, was really uh, 
uh, one I find it absolutely fascinating that you can get this kind of fire in metal. Do you want to introduce it? There, there was a, a metal sharpener that used to be manufactured. I found it very difficult to find in uh, recently. They seem to be using a, a cheaper metal now. Mm -hmm. But um, the sharpener is a mixture of aluminium and, and magnesium. So it's okay. got a, a mixture of the two metals. They're both lightweight metal. So the metal sharpener uh, is very light made of these two energy rich metals and um, when we heat the metal to a sufficiently high temperature and react it with, with steam, water vapor, mm -hmm. um, the water vapor and the, the aluminium and the magnesium react very vigorously in an extremely exothermic reaction. Well, this is likely to be the most exothermic of the reactions that we, we're doing and uh, I'm concerned that everything should go well. I have a a uh, metal sharpener here which is rich in magnesium that's an energy rich uh, metal and I have some copper wire and I'm just winding the copper wire around the magnesium the copper is meant to hold the magnesium sharpener onto the tongs and um, it'll give it a bit of green color in the conical flask over here I've got water which is boiling and um, it's producing steam and the idea is to put the hot magnesium sharpener into the funnel of the flask here, into the steam. So we have a reaction between the um, hot magnesium metal and the steam coming out. Now it's going to take a little while to uh, heat up the sharpener. And this is, of course, the energy that we need to, to kickstart the reaction. We've seen this in all the reactions, that we need activation energy to get the reaction going, and this one's no exception. OK, here we've got our first signs of life. This is going to be good. Let's put the magnesium into the steam. There you are, and when I do this at school, after a little bit of sharing and noise, the comment is usually, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Now, that, to, to see something reacting as vigorously when there's just water vapor? In this instance, I, I got the sharpener hot, so it was beginning to melt. Your in activation sparkle. energy that again. Was, right, and then I moved it into the funnel of the flask and out of the funnel of the flask was coming steam. So we had this sort of innocent water vapor um, reacting with the, with the magnesium and the aluminium metal, and the result was that huge release of energy. And because it was in a funnel, you got this whole funneling effect. Sure. What, what would our products have been there? Magnesium oxide? I think magnesium hydroxide and magnesium, magnesium oxide. Magnesium hydroxide, magnesium oxide. We, we basically oxidized magnesium and right. aluminium. So it was an oxidation reaction. The, um, the, the product is a white powder or white salt. And when we'd finished the reaction, there was a, a layer like a, a very light snowfall of, of white powder all over the table. Okay. And you would have seen it going up in the, in the form of smoke. So those are no. the oxides. That, so you, you took your magnesium, it gained electrons, and became oxidized. It, it kind of focuses on this idea of energy, which is Difficult to get your hands on conceptually, but when you get faced with this yeah. amount of demonstration of energy in processes, it really just does help to make more concrete this, this fairly abstract idea. True, Peter, and, and isn't it central to chemistry? Yes. The, the energy exchanges yes. and... Uh, All physical processes. Right. Correct. Yeah, and so it, it, it's a kind of summary of some of the highlights of the, the energy instances that one discusses during the course of the senior certificate curriculum and very central to chemistry. John, congratulations and thank you very much for Thanks, being Peter. here.